Thank you very much to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. More on that a little later. Here we go again, guys. Oh my god, I can't fit it anywhere. There we go. Hello, everybody. Glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen, and welcome to the channel. Welcome to this week's video. I would like to take a very quick moment to apologize for a lack of video last week. I guess I've just, I've had a lot on. If you don't already know, my fertilizer that I'm releasing very, very soon, I swear, I swear it's soon, it's in this unit, I'm looking at several pallets of it now, and some of it is wrapped, some of it isn't. It's been a long week, and I guess time just ran away with me. So at some point, you will actually get an extra video within one week. It was going to be this week, but guess what? Things are still running away with me a little bit, so probably next week you might get two videos. I haven't really decided when that is. Also, I'm going to apologize for the outfit, okay? I'm going to half apologize for the outfit. Equestrians among you will understand this outfit, but sometimes you just you just have to multitask if you feel me. So this week I want to talk very quickly. I'm not going to like linger on all of these forever because I know I talk about these semi-often really, but I wanted to do a video about plants that I don't want to say I'll always be able to sell them because obviously sometimes value of things just goes down and then obviously I don't stock things anymore. Case in point would be, for example, Syngonium albo. I used to sell that plant all the time. Now I probably wouldn't bother. There's no point. It's in garden centers. And please don't go thinking it's a snobbish thing because it's not. You need to look at it this way. For me to have a plant in here that needs chopped that takes up real estate, it needs to be worth the money to me because the overheads on this place are absolutely monumental. Trust me, they are monumental. So it needs to be worth it but here. And if it can't make me the money, then I can't necessarily keep it here because it's all about the fun. But at the end of the day, things have to make money. So I want to show you today stuff that I believe, at least for the foreseeable future, I will always be able to sell it for many different reasons, to be honest. I'm just having a little look now. Yeah, there's a few different reasons here. Each plant in this list, I do believe, is sellable slash stockable in plant shops at the moment. That doesn't really account for garden centers, of course. That's not really the plants I sell, but at least other plant shops and things like that. Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments and let's get right to it. Just as soon as I've had some more leaky coffee. It leaked into the car after I've just cleaned it. It's very upsetting. Mm. This first plant is going to be absolutely zero surprise to anybody. And again, I'm not going to linger on it because I talk about it all the time because it is just great. It's just great. Honestly, I can't, I can't knock this plant. So the first plant I want to talk about and something that I honestly think if you're like a boutique plant shop, some kind of independent plant shop and you, you just even, even less so than that. And you just want to stock something that's a little bit different but you could sell it quite reasonably. It's not going to be sat on your shelves for ages. It's got to be one of these. It's got to be one of these. And I know I hold it up all the time, but literally, why wouldn't you? Do you know what I mean? So this is Microsorum Thailandicum, also known as a blue oil fern. And yes, I do hold it up a lot on this channel because, as I've said before, it's one of few blue plants. Sorry, I've got fluff. It's one of few blue plants that are actually blue. If I literally put it up to the camera, there is no trickery. It's blue. Now, they're not all that blue initially, because if I show you some of these leaves, that's a new leaf here. Just to be completely transparent about this, because I know a lot of people are like, oh, mine's not that blue, blah, 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 blah. When the leaves come in here, this is very new. You see that? It is green. It is like a hardening off situation. Mine's super blue. A lot of people's might be maybe this color here like that. If you want to know the conditions I keep it in, in case you're wanting it more blue, it is getting a fair amount of light. I can't tell you specifically how much light it's getting, but it's getting a fair amount under these shelves, as you can probably tell. And humidity is uh, late 70s. Right, and I do appreciate that is above normal household environment, but I have stuck these in a household environment and they seem fine because, and I've said it before, these leaves aren't your typical fern leaves. They're very, very waxy. It's almost like a hoyer type leaf. For example, I can't bend this at all. If I tried to bend this, it would snap. So if you're looking for something a little bit different to put in your plant shop, or even obviously just to buy for yourself, whatever you want to do, maybe you're selling things online, I don't know. But this is fantastic. And I do see people here and there with them. Granted, not as big as these. I don't have any left. Do I have any left? No, I've sold out of all mine, actually. I need to get some more in because they're awesome. And to be fair, they always sell really well. But I sold quite a few big ones. And if you've seen them on my shop, you'll know that they're quite big. I think I've held them up before. It, admittedly bigger than this. This is just more spread out. But the ones I've sold are probably about this tall. So they're probably twice as big. But honestly, I would seriously consider it because I've never had a problem with them. And every time anyone's ever in doubt, I just show one of these bad boys. 
There you go. I do have a little bit of yellowing look. Can I pull that off? Because you know me, guys. I don't like to prune plants and stuff like that. I want to just show them as they are. A little bit of a leaf coming off. But yeah, that's him. Microsorum thailandicum sexual. Maybe that should be part of his name. The second plant I want to talk about is not something that is as sellable in my opinion. This is definitely, I don't want to say it's an acquired taste, but it's not quite as sellable as the first one because obviously not all of these plants are on equal footing with each other. But I want to talk about it because I don't struggle too much. I get a steady supply of them. I find them easy enough and there's always someone that wants one. So I must talk about very briefly the Monstera Aurea. This is just one of the ones I've grabbed, okay? I have some here, I have some up there, and I have some here. And unfortunately, I've kept them there a little while and they're actually all rooting into each other. So a lot of them are very, very pretty here and I can't pick them up. There's some beautiful ones on this top one. They're mainly green down there, but I think there's some Monstera Brazil in there. So that's probably why they're a bit greener down there. But I picked this one up anyway, and even then I've had to wrestle it a little bit. But this is Monstera Aurea. It's essentially yellow variegated Monstera. Is it as sought after as the white variegated? No. But is the value higher? Yes. And there is always somebody that wants it, even if they don't, let's be honest, want it for themselves. Someone always wants it to sell and propagate from and make money from because they don't mind cutting it because they don't like it as much. So it is always still a good seller. If you get one with decent variegation, it's going to carry through just fine. I find that a lot of people buy them because obviously they already have experience with the regular variegated Monstera. So they know where they're at with this one. They know where they stand. So in terms of being like worried about spending money on it, they kind of aren't because they've done it before, usually anyway, when people buy these. And I'm not saying people don't like yellow variegation. I know it's just a bit of a, it's a bit of a subject for the plant community, I think, because not everyone loves it. I do, but I think it depends on the plant. But I also think that whether I like variegated versions of plants or not depends on the plant. Like I have variegated Gloriosum back here. I love it, it's beautiful, but I will never stop probably preferring the non-variegated Gloriosum, right? So it's all about preference, but I can always sell these. I could probably sell that one as it is. Granted, it should have had a feed, really, it's missed it because we all know why things have missed a feed in here. That's my fault, that was my decision. But yeah, he should sell just fine. I would put him on the shop the way he is. And he's got a really nice spread in with variegation. The only thing you have to remember about yellow variegated, not everything, but a lot of them, yellow variegated plants, is that it's what I'd like to call Polaroid variegation. So although the leaves look variegated like this here, what you tend to get is that first. So you should be able to see that it is there and it's going to develop, but it's not completely present from the get-go. So hence I call it Polaroid. I'm going to pop him down. He sells really well. He's really cute. Doesn't sell the best on this list, but I do think I'll always be able to sell him because I think he's a bit more of a collector's monster. So we love it. Right, this next plant I feel like I'm going to get mixed opinions on and that's completely acceptable to be honest, but this next plant I always feel like I can sell. Now the value of that is what becomes a bit more questionable and I do actually think I can sell it more because I have a reasonable yield of this plant, which is like another aspect to it. And that's just because I have, can you see it up here? There's literally three trays up here of Florida Beauty propagations. So I think a lot of them, not all of them, don't get me wrong, a lot of them have quite good yield off them. So I'm able to produce them to sell. And because they're higher quality um, variegation than maybe some others, then I can sell them. So I'm not saying I'm special in any sense. I just think I've got good yield because I've had a lot of mother plants because not everyone does. But I want to let you know that these sell well and they always have done, if I'm honest, because I feel like they're just such a classic plant. Someone always wants one because they look so pretty. They look so pretty at this stage here. That's not full maturity, but it's reasonably mature. And when they're little babies, they look more like this. Also very pretty. I must pause to tell you that this plant is not doing so well. Um, there's nothing wrong with him other than he's decided to be completely yellow in his variegation, which is not ideal. So while I took a cutting from him thinking, hey, he's going to he's gonna be great, is he not? He has not done this. He has not done this. He has thrown me through a loop and he's given me all yellow growth. So that's just lovely, isn't it? So that's going to have to be cut. So I guess he's not really proving my point right now. But trust me when I say I've got a few over there and they will always sell well. Now the value has dropped a lot, I'm pretty sure, from let's just say 2021, 2020. In 2020, these things were ridiculous, I think. Now, last time I checked, and this was a few months ago, so you can throw out what I'm saying. A lot of the time you can get like a one leaf plant for, so like a cutting for about 30 something pounds. I think that's right, guys. If it's not, let me know in the comments. But from like a private seller or something on Facebook, that was roughly about the price. I don't know what it is now. 
Um, I'm not actually sure. I I have sold one leaf cuttings and they've gone quite well. Um, I'm happy to obviously sell them more like this, which was obviously the, the goal. I have one complete mother plant that I haven't cut and the rest of them are all cut. Because I think that's all the Florida Beauty I have now. So I will probably just sell them. You know, if, if this had good variegation and it wasn't like this, I would sell the whole thing. But so it really, it really depends on what you can find. But for me, I think this is such a classic variegated plant and they look so nice. And they're a climber. A lot of people like climbers because you can have, you know, like this one in the background, you can have a lot of plants in your collection because they're all vertical and they take up less space. So a lot of people prefer climbers for that. So it's a beautiful plant. And I do think, at least for the foreseeable future, I should always be able to sell it. The only question there is the price. So I'll let you know when I try and sell it because it's, I think I need to go through them because I've had them propagating for like three months perhaps. So it's probably time to check on them. The next plant that I believe, at least for the foreseeable future, I can always sell is this bad boy. Now the reasons for this are different to the other reasons. So let me just take a quick coffee break. If you're looking for a fast and reliable way to create and run your own website, you should give Squarespace a try. Squarespace is an all-in-one solution for creating your own website from scratch using a variety of modern and sleek templates. They're really customizable so you can have a website that's unique to your brand in no time. I've used Squarespace now for well over a year for the Red Plant Shop and it's working really, really well for me. No matter what Squarespace template you go for, it's really, really easy to add new sections that still fall within your design choice. It's all laid out in categories depending on what you want and it all blends seamlessly with the rest of your website so you don't even need to worry about the design once you've chosen the theme that you would like. It's all just going to work seamlessly. If you want to create a really sleek looking website either for an online store or maybe you're working on your own blog, check out squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website site or domain. That's it from voiceover me. Back to the video. Mm. Oh no, the straw is starting to cave in on itself. The reason why I think this sells well is because there's not a lot of it about. I bought mine as an individual plant. You'll have seen me haul it perhaps a year ago. Can't remember when. Um, maybe about, I don't know, eight leaves tall, maybe less, something like that. And ever since then I've propagated it and I've produced bits of it like this one, for example. This one has more than one in the pot. Clearly I've shoved some nodes in. So there's like a little baby plant here, a little baby plant there, and then this larger one here that's it was green for a while and now it's throwing out some pretty nice variegation. So this one I do think sells well because not many people have it. I only know it to be Philodendron SP Tropicals Variegated. That's what I bought it as. I'm not sure as to what the plant actually is, guys. I don't know. I guess we'll know when it's mature, but then I need to stop cutting it. So I need, I think I've said this last time, I need to find one of the, you know, a cutting or something, even if it's all green, doesn't matter, and just let it grow up a pole and then get it mature so we can get a bit of a, a better idea on it. But until then, this sells fantastically. I never struggle to sell this, and I sell this for very, very good money. Again, because we don't know what it is. There's, you know, not everyone has it. Not only that, but it's very good to propagate. And honestly, guys, I don't lie about stuff like this. If you've bought one of these from me and you've tried to propagate it, let me know because hopefully you've been really pleasantly surprised because it just, it just goes. It just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. It's possibly the best propagating philodendron I have ever had. And I do not say that lightly, but I think it might be, you know, it's really genuinely that good. Like now it's ready to cut. It almost propagates like a Syngonium, if I'm honest, in terms of like just how easy it is. These could probably live in water, no problem as well. So for that reason, they sell really well. And they are on like the upper echelon of what I would sell in terms of value, because again, they're not really around. And I think if someone wanted to buy them and resell them, you'd get very, very good return on your investment for that reason. So that is him. I'm going to pop him back. I do have more of these. It's just, I've picked this one down this week because I can't really, to be fair, I do have a lot of green that needs chopped, but I have a lot of variegates as well. But I've held this plant up a lot recently. So I've tried to pick like a different one that I've held up. I don't think this is the one I held up last week because there wasn't multiple pups in there. But if you're interested in this, by the way, do get in touch. I do need to put a couple on the website soon. So I might have to check through them actually in the next week or so. And I'll get some up. Brilliant plant. Never lets me down on propagation, on generally growing because the speed of growth is insane. Like these are obviously from nodes and they've just grown fine. They've just grown fine. So beautiful plant. Philodendron SP Tropicals.
Another plant that I don't think I will struggle selling for some time. Again, it's not super high value, but it's high enough to make some dollar off. And that is this guy. I've just picked up a, a propagation that I've done recently, which to be honest, goes to show you how well they propagate because I've propagated it from this leaf here and I've got some really nice yield. I do have a little small leaf coming up. Again, everything's Mr. Feed. It should have been fed. But this is Raphidophora tetrasperma veragata. And it's very, very lovely. It does have a value. I think it's could be low triple digits, really late double digits. I think depending on where you get them from. Hopefully my numbers are up to date. They might not be. If they aren't, of course, feel free to leave a comment. I'm not trying to like give the gospel price on things, as you guys know. But it's so good. And I think a lot of this, I've said this before, this is because the green version is in garden centers, right? Everybody knows it's tough. Most of the time, honestly, in my experience, when you add variegation to, you know, the basic green version of a plant that is already tough, the variegation doesn't really change that too much. It stays tough. Like, I know that variegation does weaken things because obviously the plant has less ability to photosynthesize and stuff like that because it lacks chlorophyll. So effectively, it has a smaller engine. But honestly, in my experience, if the green version is tough, you are very safe with the variegated version. I'm not sure any time where that's not been the case. So that's really good. And I do think that's a lot of why this will always sell well, even if the value went right down to like maybe 50 pounds for like a plant bigger than this, I still think it would sell really well because they call it Monstera Minima or Mini Monstera. It's not, by the way. But because of that and because it climbs, it trails really nicely as well. It's just a good one for the house and it's not going to die and it's really tough. So for that reason, I can see it always selling because it's proven itself before. And a lot of the times when people spend money on variegation, they worry. And that, of course, you worry. It's it's more money and it's there's risk anyway with having it in case it reverts or whatever. But if you worry about killing a plant, it, it definitely comes into play. So I think this sells well because they worry about it just sort of dying and being weak. The worry isn't really there at all. So it, it also photographs beautifully for Instagram, by the way. I'm just saying. So I think that's why this always sells. This one's very cute. I'll probably sell it very soon. Probably as it is. I think this one is, this leaf here is quite variegated. Can't fully tell. Oh, it has. Yeah, it just needs to unfill. That's probably going to be not quite half and half, maybe 30% on that leaf. But he's very, very cute. So I'll pop him down. But he is another, I don't want to say classic, but he's very, very reliable in terms of selling. If you have a shop and you think, oh, I want something nice and variegated to put in the shop, this sort of thing, can't really go wrong. As long as you get a specimen with like some variegation, it's not minimal, you'll be fine. Off the back of that, I had to mention this bad boy. This, if you can't already tell, is the wonderful variegated Adansonii. And this plant, it is great, all right? I've had a weird run with this plant, but it is great. And it actually propagates beautifully. It doesn't really stop growing. It's like a weed. So for that reason, if you have a plant shop, if you want to get you know, familiar with cutting things, propagating things, selling um, variegated things, this is a great one because the value has dropped. Do you all remember the time when it would be about £2,000 for one of these? Quite easily, by the way, literally this size. £2,000, no problem. Whoa! <laughs> Isn't it mad how things can change? It's literally weird. But it's not worth that much now. I've sold one recently. I can't remember. I think it was low... Was it low double digits or very early triple digits for a plant? And it had like tons of leaves on it. Like, not like this. It was way bigger than this. And I thought, do I cut it? And I thought, no, I'll just sell it as it is. It's fine. I've got more. Not a problem. It's just... It looked so nice as it was. I didn't want to cut it. So that's him. Oh, is it tangled on itself? Hang on. There we go. There we go. Now it can unravel. There we go. That's nicer. Oh, it's gone slightly obliquerish right here. Can you see it? Quite happy with that. Look at that. You see it? Ooh, cute. Looks quite obliquery that. I understand really how some people could confuse the two, but normally it grows a bit more like that one there. But yeah, I won't rattle on about this too long because I have done before. I think people buy this because it's easy. Again, same as the Raphidophora. It grows like a weed. It propagates really well. This plant, I will say this one thing, this plant has a very unique ability to keep giving you half moon leaves despite you cutting it from half moon leaves. Does this make any sense? I've gone on about this a little bit recently as well. Apologies. But a lot of the times when you get leaves like this and you propagate, you end up with an all green and all yellow. This plant kind of, it's just not really affected by that. And it's got to be one of the only plants I know of that isn't. So it is a very easy propagator in terms of variegation rather than just on its own as a plant. So I think that's another reason as well. They photograph really well. There's always someone that wants one of these because a lot of people admired these from afar during
during you know the COVID period or whatever, and now they're accessible. So there is like a little second wave of people buying them, and you can still make money on them if you want. You just have to understand that you're not making thousands, but you can absolutely make money on them because they grow really quick. So I'll just show you one more time. He will probably be up for sale soon. He's very cute, isn't he? Because that's his mama leaf there. This will harden off to white, by the way. There it is. These are just a little bit new still, but they will harden off. Sorry, it wants to focus on my face. How rude. But that's him. Variegated Adansoni eye. Mm. I do like these, honestly. I just have a really weird relationship with them. But they do, as, as a shop owner, they've always done me really well. I can't complain. Right, this one's going to have to be in a pot because it's so tall. It needs cut down imminently because it's a nightmare. So I'm going to have to hold it like this. This is something I believe I can sell for a while because I don't think the value is going to drop very quickly because I'm pretty sure the supplier of it has, if I'm not mistaken, he raised his prices quite a lot. It was a bit like, whoa, okay. So now if you've got it, you're spending a lot on just getting it in in terms of like trade price. It is quite high. At least that's my last information. Again, things change. So I could be wrong, but that's my last memory of it because I haven't bought in any of these since. I've just kept up my initial supply of these and I probably had about five plants. So I've used those as mothers and they, they don't as quick as I would like them to actually I will say that but are they worth it yeah so this is I could have this wrong and forgive me if I've gotten it wrong in the past but I think this is philodendron squammy coal red or blood or dark don't know I assume that's an umbrella thing for the same plant so all of those names I've given you are the same plant but the cool thing about plant is look at this it is green by the way it's not black but it, for all intents and purposes it does look black because if I tilt it you can probably see the green but you're mainly looking quite black not only that but the back side of the plant which I will do my best to show you without smacking the lens you get this beautiful blood red color you get these lovely fuzzy petioles like such look at that it is very luxurious honestly it's a bit like the new dark lord kind of thing because for a long time that was like the dark plant for a lot of tents of purposes I think this kind of is and it does grow better than this obviously it's had a bit of a rough ride it's still in the moss from when I got it that's a bit lazy of me probably should have potted that up I, it would do great with a feed as well actually so I should probably do that but it can grow better than this but generally that is what the growth you're getting it's very very coarsome in the way it grows so if you like very coarsome and you can handle that kind of growth that's basically what you're getting but if you were to cut this and sell cuttings of this you would fetch a bit of a price I'm not saying it's hundreds obviously but you'd fetch good money for it in my opinion so it is still worth it and I think that's why people will always try and get it because it's harder to get because now in the current climate with plants there's a lot of shops that don't really want to spend that money bringing in a plant if they can't move it on so as a result the people buying this plant have become less and less so there's not as much out of it and that's just due to the supply because the supply price has gone up so people are just a little bit like mm, about pushing the button on it in my opinion in my opinion that's what i think is happening because i know i have do you know what i mean and i have some of the plants so that's probably why but is it worth it yeah <laughs> because honestly i think this looks amazing so i won't linger on it anymore but that's him there i do believe him to be philodendron squammy coal blood i think i've called it squamiferum in the past but i think it's squammy coal guys i can't remember but you'll find it anyway if you're looking for it i'm sure even if it starts with a hip from my shop that's like an old listing there, there is a couple of people that sell cuttings but i just don't think they're around maybe my information right now is so far out of date if it is please accept my apologies i haven't checked so i'm not stood here trying to say something is hard to get if it isn't if it isn't do let me know in the comments more than happy to hear it but that's him and whether he's easy to get or not it doesn't matter because he's beautiful look at him look at that oh boy you see all these extra florals on the underside of the leaf there if you're wondering what that is but he beautiful oh yes yes boy the next plant that i do believe i would be able to sell for a good while and i think it's worthy for a lot of shops is the following this here and i have two of them i have one that's slightly bigger although it does have two in the pot actually which is very lucky and another one here that i have in lacquer this is Anthurium Delta Force. Now, I'm going to just pick this up because it's easier. There's nothing wrong with this one. It's just younger and it's a bit wobbly in the pot. And you can't see the features as much. But this here is Anthurium Delta Force. Now, I've banged on about this plant a lot. But essentially, this plant is a... It's a hybrid between two plants. 
However, there are a lot of countries that are selling this plant and it's not actually Delta Force. So I believe, and I hope I don't keep getting this wrong, but this is a hybrid between phil uh, philodendron, philodendron, I need some more coffee, between Anthurium clarinervium, the really cool garden centre one, and I believe Anthurium pedato radiatum, actually said at that time. However, guys, little lesson for you, you can't just call any hybrid of those two plants Delta Force because they don't actually look like this when hybridised. I'm, I'm assuming it's come from like an F1 hybrid, so it's been very variable anyway. But so far, nothing has looked like this. The only plant that has looked like this, and it is very unique, I'll show it to you while I talk, is the Delta Force. So the only way you can get Delta Force is by taking it from one of these plants. You feel me? So I wanted to say that because I've seen them on the internet and people are just calling things Delta Force. And you can tell even when they're young, they look nothing like Delta Force. And to be honest, if I just pick this back up, this is probably a good time to show you a young Delta Force so you can see the difference. Because when people are selling them, a lot of the time they are this size maybe, maybe a bit smaller. But this is the kind of patterning you should start to see on a young Delta Force. So if you don't see that, literally red flag, the true origin of the Delta Force, I believe it's from Steve Nock of Re Gardens. That is where mine is from, if you're wondering. I got mine sent over. I paid for it shortly before I had my variegated gloriosum sent over from NSE. So when I bought it, I bought the Delta Force, which my mother plant, you've all seen it. I bought that and I also had my gloriosum sent over. So they were done in two, two different boxes. I do believe I have an unboxing on my channel of that. But that is literally the Delta Force. It is the real one. So for that reason, no matter what, I do think I'll pick him back up. I think I will always be able to sell him because he is what he is. And I'd like to think that people trust me on that. Um, but not only that, not only that, it doesn't really matter what his value is because he's very high value. He is unique and you can't get that very easily, at least not for some time. So I do think he will always sell quite well for at least the foreseeable future. So I do have a few more of these left, by the way, on the site, mainly the smaller size, which for reference, I think they are a little bit smaller than this, maybe, maybe about there on this plant. So maybe two inches shorter, something like that. But I do have them this size on the website. So if you're interested, feel free to take a look at that. I think the only bigger one I have is probably this one now. Technically there is two, so don't go thinking that's super, um, bushy because it's not. There's two that have just sort of stuck together there. So they need separated. I think this is the last big one I have. They are going quite quickly though, because that is from a slightly earlier lot of Delta Force and it's grown really well. So yeah, I do think these will always do me very, very well and they have done so far and they're really, really beautiful. And it's got a lot of prestige about the plant. I know there's plenty of people out there that appreciate that. So always will do well. Now I should have backed this next plant off the back of that squammy blood because it just made more sense. But alas, I got a bit sidetracked by the Delta Force. But another plant that I can't see me not being able to sell for some time is this little guy. And I've actually shown you a baby one this time, which I never do because the big boy, can I even pull it into the frame there? Can you see a bit of it? It's huge, so I can't really pick him up. Like he literally is huge. His leaves are the size of my torso. But it's a small version of him. This is what I like to call Anthurium Mysterious Dark Boy. I don't fully know what he is. He's either Mudinum or... It was a red beauty or something like that. He's, he's one of those types of anthuriums, but essentially that doesn't matter. All you need to know is he is very, very dark and his leaves come through like this with decent light, by the way, because um, he just lives literally in one of these shelves here. There's, there's nothing different about his care. Every plant in here has the same care. So he just lives under those shelves and that's the beautiful lighting I get. And you should be able to tell how dark he looks if I just put him up to my face. Not that I feel like that helps much. He's very, very dark. Is he black? Ooh, not, it's more like the darkest, darkest, darkest burgundy plum purple color you've ever seen. So it's not black, but for an all intents and purposes, if you took a photograph of it, you know, tweak the contrast or whatever and put it on Instagram, it's black. Do you know what I'm saying? But because I'm looking at this one, it is seriously, it's like the darkest, darkest, darkest burgundy ever. And hopefully you can see that if I show you that. You should see it. There's a lot of burgundy in it, but most people just say it's black. When the leaves get older, they do fade down to a green. It is a very dark green. Again, I don't know if I can... No, I literally can't even pull a leaf to show you. Nope, I can't. But it takes so long to fade. It takes so long, months and months and months before these will even go remotely green. So you'll have a really good time with it. And I think that's why it sells really, because it's just it's sexy, it's dark. Not only that, 
But these are very easy, by the way. And I mean very easy. It's hard to kill them. It's easy to please them. And they grow very quickly and they propagate so well for me. Uh, the yield I've had off this is not even funny, guys. But they're really, really good for that. Not only that, but because they're glossy and they're not velvety, they're even tougher. And I say this a lot about Imperium. The glossy types are usually tougher than the velvet types. For whatever reason, they can just hold their own. Probably because that waxiness on the leaf is a bit more of like a... I almost want to say like a protective coating. And it just helps with things like underwatering, low humidity, stuff like that. Maybe even pests to a degree, if I'm honest. So they are really, really good for that, and the colour is absolutely amazing. So that's the other leaf on here, by the way, if you wanted to see it. Slightly different shape. But yeah, I call him Anthurium Mysterious Dark Boy. He could be Mudinum, he could be Red Secret, he could be something, maybe a cross between the two, I don't know. But that's what he is, and I think he'll always sell because he looks like this, and because he's easy, and he grows beautifully. We love him. And I should probably sell some of these. For example, this, I would say, is more than sellable. So at some point, I'll probably put some up on the website. He's very pretty, is he not? Ooh, he nice. Another plant that I believe I will be able to sell quite well for the foreseeable future, and if you're a shop, this might be a really nice one for you, because I think you could propagate this well yourself if you're doing it on your own, and even if you're not completely sure what you're doing, I'm not sure you could really go wrong. That's why I'm kind of recommending it. And that's this guy. He's one of many propagations. That's why he does look a bit funky, but he roots like no tomorrow. Can you see this? Literally. Don't have to worry about roots. This is Syngonium Geopensi. Very good. I really like it. I think a lot of people like it because one, it's easy as hell, like a lot of Syngonium. Two, it doesn't really look like a Syngonium. You could be forgiven for thinking this was something else. So it's really, really good. The leaves feel very unique. They feel quite rubbery. Again, I always say this, if you're able to feel one of these in a store, obviously even if it's just the green version, please do and report back to me. It's very, very satisfying. I think just touching it alone might make you want to buy it. If you're a very tactile person, then I think this is its very satisfying to touch. I'm always doing this when I'm talking about this plant. But yeah, it's a really good plant for me. This, I've said this before, this is a plant that I've had so much return on my investment it has been crazy i can't remember when i bought it in but i bought a mother plant that was maybe you know like this i can't remember how many leaves i had maybe five or six i've only ever had that one plant guys i've only ever had that one plant i now have a tray i have half a tray here bear in mind i have been selling it and then another tray here that's not don't get wrong it's not all variegated but most of it is and i've sold a fair few head cuttings and stuff like that of it in the past so i've got so much yield out of one plant because it just keeps going and it keeps giving me this. And it's another plant that it handles half moons well. It's not perfect, don't get me wrong, it's not as good as variegated Anzonii, but it handles it quite well. So I have to mention it because if it's something that you think, oh, you know, I have a boutique online shop, what should I get? I need something that, you know, I don't mind spending a bit of money, but it, it can't go wrong for me. Obviously nothing's foolproof, but in terms of this plant and getting a return and stuff, I would say it is because it's just, it's just great. It's easy. You're not going to struggle with it. I don't think you'll kill it. I don't think you're going to have any problems with um, variegation. Get a one with half decent variegation, but even then, it doesn't have to be incredible. I mean, look at that. That's nice enough, but it's proceeded to give me a full half moon out of that. Do you know what I mean? It, it, this plant is the definition of chaos. But a lot of my variegates, if I just move back here, I do have some nice ones. This one has been a bit bleached, but this one's lovely as well. Hopefully you can see from all the way back there. I don't want to pick up everything. I've got loads. I've got a few half moons. I've got... Ooh, I've got one. You'll like this, guys. One that I held up the other week for being reverted. Do you remember? I said I was going to keep this plant, even though it's probably reverted, because I like it so much. Look what it's done for me. You see that? It's just pumped back out variegation. So there we are. Awesome. So I do actually recommend the plant. And as I say with everything, if you're going to cut something because you think it's reverted, case in point, that plant I've just held up for you, just, oh, please, for me, for me, just pot up the the off cuts that you've had of the plant that's reverted and just group them in a pot if you have to and just leave it in the corner and give it, I don't know, two, three months. And if it comes back, win. Because you could have thrown that out. So don't give up on them as soon as they're green. I know it sounds wild and I don't fully understand how it works either, but sometimes variegation can just come back. Okay, so don't give up on your plants. But that's case in point of why that plant is so just good. Good to sell, good to propagate, good to have around, really. It's never done me wrong. And that's it. Hopefully I've figured out something to title this video because my message is, I don't know what my message is filming this. It's more, hey, if you want something that would sell, I, it's not supposed to be aimed at a shop because... I know not everyone is a shop, but a lot of people do have plants and they do buy plants to keep. But a lot of times, you know, you don't know what life is going to throw you, right? That's how I see it. So I'm not saying everyone is out to sell plants, but sometimes life can throw you for a loop. You know, you can have a plant and it's great. 
and something goes wrong with the car and you're like well shit now i have to make you know 100 200 dollars pounds whatever uh how do i do it quickly so is there something i could have around in my house that a i enjoy and b if i needed to i could make some cash off and not in all cases for example this guy here that's not something you're going to propagate these by the way if you're a shop you're buying these and you're selling them on you're not propagating these but in a lot of the other scenarios it could save your ass you know what i mean and i think I, I don't see a problem in making plant ownership about that sometimes. Why not? Why not? You're buying plants, you're spending the money on them. If you can get any return on them when you need it or when you want to, that's great. And I don't care if people shame me for that mindset about house plants because I know a lot of people are like, oh, Kaylee doesn't like plants. She just does it to sell them. And it's like, well, yeah, I've got plant shop. Like, you want a sticker? What do you want? But the point is, I, I do think everyone should be able to do that if they want to. I don't think that should be frowned upon at all. I think. I mean, to say my piece, I think in COVID, people got very soured by it because if if you were just in the right place at the right time with your plant collection, you could make thousands of pounds, like thousands. We know that. And I think sometimes people are still a bit sour about that. But I think it's useful to have. And I don't think there's any harm in it. it there's no harm in saying, oh, well, I might stock this plant instead of this plant just because... If I need, if, you know, if I'm in a pinch, I can snip, snip and get a little bit of cash back. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't, I don't think anyone should be sort of shamed into that. So that's one of the reasons for this video. It's not just for shops or anything. It's just like, hey, you know, if you need to make some cash, I think these are viable, but not in a major investment plant way, just in a, you know, these plants are cool. They give me joy, but also if I needed to, I could make the cash. Does that make any sense? Hopefully it does. And hopefully I've gathered a title from all that. So if the title is terrible, now you know why. But anyway, that is it for this week's video. Hopefully, again, as I say, you should have two next week for definite. Probably on Tuesday, probably on Friday, something like that. But if you'd like to leave any comments on prices of things or how you've found certain plants, like I'd love to know how you've been finding the blue oil fern, the microsorum, because I know a few people have that, or just any of the other plants as well, the mysterious dark boy, anything like that, do let me know in the comments because I'd love to see, as well as some of the prices that I've mentioned. For example, if I'm way off on something, just let me know. No one's going to bite your head off. I freely admit that if, you know, if I'm not selling a given plant, then I can get out of the loop pretty quickly because I only check before I sell it a lot of the time. So anyway, thank you very much for watching this video, guys. It's been a pleasure. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. It lets me know that you enjoy the content that I create for you on this platform. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you could subscribe. That's it for this week's video, guys. I will see you in the next one for sure. Bye.